Chapter 1. Start me up. What to do before you get preggers. Time to get knocked up? It's kind of ironic, isn't it? As younger women, we spend a considerable amount of effort trying not to get pregnant. Then, when the time comes to completely reverse that mindset, it can be a little disorienting. Please don't let me be pregnant somehow turns into, please let me be pregnant. The average woman in the United States spends three decades of her life, not necessarily all in a row, trying to avoid pregnancy and about five years trying to get pregnant, being pregnant, and going through the postpartum period to get the two children most women say they want. However, during those five precious years, for you it may be only one or it could be a decade, how you live your life can help in big ways to determine how easily you'll become a future mom. Although not everyone does it, planning and prepping your body appropriately for fertility and a healthy pregnancy are essential, both for you and for your baby. If you're already pregnant, you can skip straight to chapter two, but I hope you'll read this chapter anyway. You might learn some good stuff that will still be relevant to you. If not, let's start the preparation process for the pregnancy to come. And it is a process, an important one. Maybe you didn't expect that, and maybe you're trying to guess what I'm getting at. I am at a healthy weight. I have no fertility issues that I'm aware of. What is she talking about? Well, not to worry. I'm going to tell you. Our inadvertent path to pregnancy planning. I don't want to jump ahead too much, but in an attempt to stress the significance of this chapter, let me say the following. Thankfully, Heidi is gay. No, it's not because we like rainbows and pride parades. It's because we were doing IUI, intrauterine insemination, a.k.a. the turkey baster method, which forced us to the doctor before Heidi was pregnant and not after, like most heterosexual couples I know. And these doctors asked a million questions, sent her to several other doctors, and ran a battery of tests, which I initially thought unnecessary and inconvenient. We're gay, I thought, not infertile, for God's sake. Get the baster, shoot her up. This is such a waste of time. I was incredibly impatient and annoyed until those tests revealed some surprising and extremely significant results. It turns out that Heidi had uterine polyps, a definite roadblock to conceiving naturally. Had we been a typical heterosexual couple, we likely would have tried to get pregnant for two years before discovering something was wrong. And had Heidi actually managed to get pregnant in spite of those polyps, she had thyroid issues she was unaware of, which could have caused major complications during her pregnancy or even caused infertility had they not been addressed beforehand. As grateful as I was to have had this utterly inadvertent intervention, I was also a bit stunned. I remember thinking, why doesn't everybody go through this process? If a perfectly healthy young woman found these unexpected conditions, wouldn't all couples want to know what their health status is before they start trying? Think of the time and heartache it would save those with fertility issues left in the dark month after month, wondering why the at-home pregnancy tests kept coming up negative. Even more importantly, wouldn't everyone want to find out if they have any issues that could cause problems during and even after the pregnancy and resolve them ahead of time? Why don't all doctors recommend this to all their patients before they try to conceive? Not just the gay ones sent to the fertility clinic as a formality. I was also left wondering why a young, healthy woman would be hyperthyroid. And why was her uterus covered in polyps? Heidi saw her OBGYN for regular checkups. Why didn't someone catch this ages ago? Why hadn't her OBGYN asked her if she planned on getting pregnant at any point so all these issues could have been identified and rectified sooner? This is really where my gears began turning. How could this whole process be backward for the majority of our population? But there's so much to tell. So let's start at the beginning. Don't worry, we aren't going to go back to the Big Bang. I mean the beginning of how Heidi and I came to learn about the importance and necessity of a pre-pregnancy plan and how we implemented it. The beginning. This process started for Heidi and me in early 2010. At this time, I was working on a TV show called Losing It. On this show, I would move in with overweight families and coach them back to health. Of course, the families had kids. And for one of the episodes, I moved in with a family in Detroit who had two little girls. One of the little girls was named Lily, and she was nine years old. I adored her. I would wake up with them, pack their lunches, help them make their healthier dinners, and talk about why we were switching out certain...